there! So today we're going to talk about how you can improve your T-sides by better understanding map control, and how you can take three basic mechanics of crosshair placement, movement, and a little bit of utility to turn into a T-sided machine. If you're ever struggling to find impact on T-side, learning how to properly take contested areas at the beginning of the round is going to go a very long way. Early round Counter-Strike is a battle of information and map control more than it is a gunfight. That's why on more T-sided maps like Anubis, you'll see the CTs go for aggressive openings more often. While sure, they may make contact and get an opening kill from time to time, when they don't, the information they gain can be just as useful, allowing for better rotates. The same concept applies to T-side as well. Taking the necessary map control early on and knowing how to navigate through this phase of the round without putting yourself at a disadvantage is absolutely critical. About a year ago, I watched a video called Map Control 101 from Wraith, and even though I was already a pretty high-level player, it really changed the way I approached this side of the game. In the video, Wraith talks about viewing Counter-Strike as a linear game, moving through the map in an almost step-by-step -step fashion where you're able to clear every single angle as you're taking space. The game stops being linear once you hit a point where you're exposed to multiple angles at the same time. You can't continue taking map control without a little bit of assistance. So how do we put all of that into practice? Let's have another look at this in greater detail. What we're focusing on here is giving ourselves the best odds to win our duels. We do this by clearing one angle at a time and exposing ourselves to only one enemy at a time. Taking map control this way ensures you're in complete control of your duels and never surprised. Thinking about it in this fashion helps us identify how far we can go on our own and when we need a little bit of assistance. So now let's talk about the three main pieces that you're gonna have to understand in order to approach Counter-Strike in this fashion. The first of which is gonna be crosshair placement. You're gonna need to have enough map knowledge to understand, well, where are the enemies going to be? Instead of just rounding the corner, you're gonna position your crosshair where you think they're gonna be, and then peek out with some purpose and destroy them. Now, of course, crosshair placement means absolutely nothing if you can't stop and shoot them. That's why counter strafing is the second most important piece to this puzzle. So if you're new to counter strike or maybe you're just struggling with this mechanic in general, take a look at the keyboard down to the lower left. All counter strafing is is where you're going to be moving in one direction and then hitting the opposite movement key to stop faster. In this situation, I'm holding A and then pressing D to stop and shooting right as I stop. And you don't even need a fancy workshop map to practice this. You can just go onto any wall in the game and just shoot a couple of places out on it and then just go back and forth and practice hitting that position. It's as simple as that. So one more major piece of advice is whenever you're peeking and counter strafing, you do not want to be holding W at all. A lot of times, even until I was into like face it level eight and nine, I was still going around corners like this where I would still counter strafe, but I'm holding W so it makes it harder to stop. I'm having to hold S and A instead of just A, right? So instead of going around corners, like this and stopping, go around them like this where you're only using D and only using A to stop. That moves us on to the next piece, which is our pathing, kind of how we move about clearing angles. Now, this is a very easy example because there is a huge area here. The only position we're expecting is right here. That's really all we're expecting. They could be standing next to the pot, but that's a fairly easy adjustment, right? I generally am going to favor clearing this. Now, even if we go way out wide here, we're not at risk of exposing to other angles at once. However, in a situation like maybe now I'm wanting to clear the bottom of stairs, well, if I peek out too far, I'm also exposed to the top like this. So you have to be very careful with how your movement goes, right? So that's where your counter strafing comes in, where you can stop on a dime onto a player like this, but also understanding that you're not going too far out. You kind of understand your path and you're stopping here before you fully expose to this guy, right? Now, this is one of the more extreme examples because there are a lot of angles here that you have to worry about. And if you, if you just barely peek too far out, you could be exposing to two angles at once. Now, that doesn't always mean you're going to immediately die, but when you're trying to play counter strike in a more linear fashion and minimize the amount of disadvantages you put yourself at, you're going to have to pay attention to things like this. Now, when it comes to combining all of these skills together, deathmatch is a pretty good way to do it. But what if I told you there's an even better method to practice all of this? If you haven't already, you should definitely start running pre-fire maps. With bots being in common positions and able to punish you if your pathing is bad, it's the best way to practice your clearing. One of the best workshop playlists out there right now is from a guy named Limitless. I'm going to go ahead and link that down in the description below. You can subscribe to these for free, load in, pick a difficulty, and start practicing. The bots are going to shoot you if you're too slow, if you overpeak, or if you just miss. And at the time of recording this, unfortunately, he's only done this for Mirage and Vertigo. Since I like practicing on every single map, I generally use Refrag for this sort of practice. They've kind of got the best variety for that sort of thing, and in my opinion, the best bot placements too. 
But honestly, the main reason I prefer refrag is for their X fire mode, which is kind of like normal pre-fire, except sometimes the bots will peek out and jump scare you, which definitely keeps you on your toes being a more realistic scenario. Now I get it, not everyone has time to just grind out for multiple hours a day on practicing this sort of thing. So for a lot of people, just playing and thinking about it is enough. But what I usually like to do is I kind of incorporate it into a warm up. So in Refrag specifically, I've created a little warm up playlist that I just go through. And for about 15 minutes before each time I play, I shoot a couple of bots and then I go into some pre fire and crossfire arenas. And it's a nice way to work on map knowledge. I'll kind of pick one map for the week and just kind of run through it and that sort of thing. Again, completely not mandatory, but it's definitely something that's helped me out and gets me very warmed up while at the same time improving on all of these skills. If you want to try out my warm up playlist, I've linked it down below. You can just subscribe to it and give it a try yourself. If you don't have refrag, that's not a problem. I've actually reached out to them. They were nice enough to provide us with a thousand refrag trial codes, which is pretty insane. So they're on screen right now. Feel free to pause it, grab one of the codes. And uh, hey, if that doesn't work, let me know down in the comments if you can't find a code that's working. And I'm sure we can probably hook you up. All right, so before we finish up, let's do a quick little recap. We've discussed how to be more impactful by taking map control in a smart, linear fashion. By improving our angle clearing with better crosshair placement and movement, we can take contested areas on the map much more effectively. So that brings us to our final segment. What happens when Counter-Strike stops being linear? What happens when you have to peek into a position to where there are two angles you're gonna have to worry about? At best, you have a 50-50 shot at picking the correct position to pre-fire. In a situation like this, you're either gonna need some help from your teammates or it's time to crack out the utility. So in this particular situation, if I were to have a molly, well, before I even peek this angle, it would be really easy to just molly off the bottom of the stairs and the player that's in this position, I would have a sound cue if he's there and it would be a very easy kill to swing out and shoot him as he's trying to run out of that Molotov. If I don't hear anything, well, I just clear it as if that angle down there doesn't exist at all. Or in certain situations, you may just need to use a smoke. For example, you can peek this arch corner without exposing towards this region, but if you wanna go a little bit deeper, well, all you're gonna to have to do is just smoke it off and peek. Now, again, that's a super basic and easy concept, but again, when you're thinking about the game on these terms, it's a little bit easier to identify how and where to use your utility. So yeah, guys, I realize this is more broader concept and maybe a little bit more beginner friendly than my typical videos, but I still hope you learned something new from this. If you want to see more guides similar to this, let me know down in the comments below. And if you're interested in some early round utility to help you out on these sorts of plays, well, stay tuned to the channel. We've got some pretty cool stuff cooking.